Hello, I'm Terry Christensen, and this is Valley Politics, recorded on Zoom this month as we await the opening of Creativity's new studio on South 2nd Street. Our guests today are Nora Campos and Peter Ortiz, the top two of five candidates for San Jose City Council District 5 in the June primary. They now face each other in the November runoff election. By way of background, District 5 is all of East Side San Jose from Highway 101 East to the Alum Rock foothills. The population of the district is 55% Latino, 33% Asian, 8% white, and 1% black. And it's a district rich in history for San Jose's longtime Latino population, and more recently, a growing Vietnamese community. Let's meet the candidates. Welcome everyone and welcome Peter Ortiz and Nora Campos. We've asked both of you to keep your answers to around a minute. Uh, we'll allow follow-ups if requested and we'll have questions from community members as well as a lightning round of short answer questions. So let's get started with why each of you is running and what you hope to bring to the council. Nora, you begin. You know, thank you for that question. Um, I first wanna share that I have always uh, enjoyed serving my community and made a commitment a long time ago um, to serve East San Jose and to serve the greater part of San Jose. And my community came to me and said, when you served, we were able to accomplish so many things. We're asking you to come back because we need your strong leadership. We saw that uh, leaders, when uh, COVID hit, leaders took a very long time to respond so I made it my um, responsibility to make sure that we got resources here by making sure that we secured funding for the Mexican Heritage Plaza so that we could test and then go right in to, uh, we, we could test individuals after they finished uh, the process of getting them uh, uh, vaccinated. And that process worked really well. Public safety has been a priority for me and it hasn't been a priority for this council and the community has suffered because of those results. And those are some of the reasons why I'm running. And I hope that I get the opportunity to share many things, but I want the community to know that we can imagine a community where you can walk out your front door and feel safe and visit your neighboring parks and your shopping centers and even your friends. Thank you for that question. Thanks, Nora. Peter Ortiz, why are you running and what do you hope to bring to the council? Hello everyone, uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, as mentioned, my name is Peter Ortiz and I'm running for city council because I believe it is possible to create a better San Jose that works for all of us. I was born and raised in East San Jose by a single mother who worked to make a better life for my brothers and me. Uh, my love for my community and access to education gave me a chance. Now I have served as a local school board member and currently serve as president of the Santa Clara County Board of Education, working to ensure that every child has equal access to education and opportunity in this valley. Um, if there's one thing that we know, it's that the status quo in this city is not working. We are at a crossroads and our candidacy represents a new vision for our city. A vision that advocates for restructuring our priorities to focus on the basics, uh, ensuring and addressing uh, homelessness, uh, making sure that public safety is a priority and revitalizing our local economy. I believe that we can and we must do better for our local residents. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. So Peter, you're endorsed by labor in the Democratic Party. And Nora, you're also endorsed by labor. And in the past races, you've been endorsed by the Democratic Party too. So it seems like you'd both vote with the liberal progressive Latino caucus on the city council. In which case, what difference would it actually make which one of you wins? Are there specific issues or policies you disagree about where your votes really would be different? Peter, let's start with you on this one. Uh, so there's, I wouldn't say, I'm not gonna go into detail of where I exactly disagree with Nora. I, I'm not sure exactly, but what I, what I can talk about is, yes, I do identify as a progressive. Yes, I am endorsed by the Democratic Party, uh, but I also have extensive experience advocating for small businesses in San Jose. Now, as a small business advocate, I've 
that le uh, uh, le uh, legislative advocacy, both with the Hispanic Chamber and um, with the Alamark Santa Clara Street Business Association at the local level and the state level. You know, I, I helped lead a coalition organizing in Alum Rock, uh, um, going door to door with small businesses to help form uh, uh, the business association, which I now sit on when we won $2 million from the county uh, for direct relief for small businesses when no one was going out and, and really advocating uh, for them. So yes, you know, I am a progressive. Yes, I'm endorsed by the Democratic Party, but my, uh, my priority will be advocating for working people and small businesses to me are working people as well. Nora, what about you? What, what, what's gonna be different about you from Peter if you're on the council? I think the difference between um, my leadership and my opponent's leadership is that I have experience. I know how to work with individuals that may not have the same views as I have. And I think that's gonna be very important as we move forward, depending on who the new mayor is, right? Uh, that will change oh, the yeah. dynamics and, and where what direction we go. So I think that uh, for District 5, we need to have a strong leader that has the experience to be able to get things done, a proven track record, even when you don't agree with your current mayor. I mean, it's no secret that I had to really be strategic in how I was able to secure services. When I served on the city council and Chuck Reed was the mayor, um, he was a supportive of adding additional police officers to the budget. And I think that showed my leadership that I was able to secure an additional 25 police officers in the budget. And those of you that remember that, Chuck Reed did not support the budget. That was the first time a mayor did not support his own budget. So I think that's what it's about, leadership, being able to be able to think on your toes, being able to create policy when you have to uh, for your community so that the services that we uh, need in East San Jose come forward. But not just East San Jose, I mean, bringing 25 police officers to the to the budget meant that it was uh, we were going to be on a path to make sure that services for the whole city of San Jose were going to be delivered, and that didn't happen. And we're seeing that uh, a lot of articles are coming out about the short shortage that we are. Uh, but I think that's where I'm going to be the the advocate I have always been for the community and continue to be the leader, whether it's around housing, small businesses. And I did a, a whole lot around small businesses when I was on the council and in the assembly and as a private citizen working with the state of California to bring different resources for small businesses to be able. It is a good thing when you have someone from Sacramento that's calling and saying, hey, Nora, can you help us work with the city of San Jose? I know you're not in office, but can you help us get the, an opportunity to be able to do a uh, seminar to the small businesses. That's what I bring experience. And I'm hoping that the voters will see that. Okay, thank you both. So you're both well aware that homelessness is a top concern for your constituents and for voters all over the city. Uh, it was the number one topic suggested when we asked residents to participate in the show. So here's a question from one of those residents. This is Jose Villarreal. Hello, District, District 5 candidates. What is currently not being done by the city of San Jose to address homelessness, and what are you going to do about it? Thank you. Nora? No, thank you for that question. Um, when I uh, was in the city uh, council, I built 3,000 affordable housing units, and we were on a path to be able to close that gap. What well, didn't happen, um, I left and I went to the assembly. And in 2016, at that point, we had about 4,000 homeless individuals and then COVID hit and it tripled. Uh, in that year, in 2016, I moved forward with a pilot program, um, which was AB 2176, which created the language for us to be able to build tiny homes and bridge housing for our unhoused population. And what the, I think the benefit of that particular policy is that when COVID hit, the language had already been adopted and the governor was able to move quickly and swiftly to be able to uh, make sure that we were building um, units with the bridge housing uh, policy uh, that was adopted by the state of California. That's the creative policy that I'm gonna uh, bring forward. And, and I won't wait three years to implement a policy that is adopted 
and is put into law from the state so that we can address this policy, this issue of homeless. So I'm creative, I've already done it, and we just gotta build on policy that already exists for the city of San Jose and move quickly. Peter, so what's currently not being done by the city of San Jose to address homelessness that you'll do something about? I, I appreciate this uh, question, Terry. And I, I come to this uh, position with personal experience. I myself have been homeless in the past. I know what it's like to be forced to sleep on a park bench actually in, in District 5 and be exposed to the elements. Um, many of us live paycheck to paycheck and, and in several situations are a car note or uh, a hospital visit away from being homeless in ourselves. Our goal should be at the end of the day to get our neighbors in the homeless community permanent housing, as well as to provide those in need of mental health and substance abuse uh, uh, counseling, the support that they need. Uh, we, we need to also have the important conversation with our residents about creating and supporting permanent supportive housing uh, options for homeless populations in the district and, and throughout the, the city. Without creating these permanent solutions, we're not gonna solve this very uh, serious issue. But in the interim, right, we need to make sure that our council members are being innovative by identifying interim, uh, short-term transitional housing, temporary transitional opportunities um, for the immediate uh, uh, relief uh, uh, and removal of, of the homeless population. This is not a one-pronged answer and it's gonna take a huge commitment from everyone. And I've already been in the district. I haven't been waiting to be an elected official, but I've been in the district organizing with neighborhood leaders. I've had homeless uh, uh, encampments embedded already working in partnership with, with uh, uh, neighborhood leaders on the ground level. And that's, I think, an issue that um, District 5 in the past has suffered from. Uh, Non-attentive council members, individuals who are not at the ground level working with neighborhood leaders to address the problem. And that's the experience that I bring. We're going to stick with this topic for a minute because homelessness in the district most likely is going to increase as new development and gentrification displace current residents. Here's a follow-up question from Leticia Escorcia, who's active with Somos Mayfair. Here's Leticia. Hello. What is your plan to mitigate the raising cost of uh, housing that threatens uh, our community and uh, with eviction, homelessness, and displacement in San Jose? Thank you. Peter, we'll begin with you. No, thank, thank you so much. This is also a, a question that is really important to me and to our, our campaign. You know, as, as your city council member, you have my commitment to champion the development of all types of housing, including market rate, but also including affordable housing in, in our district. You know, I, I've been a uh, renter, you know, all my life. I represent a population that's often um, not included in these conversations. And that's a group of individuals who grew up here, but are, are unfortunately not able to afford to see a future in this valley. So I'm gonna champion the development of both affordable housing and tenant pref, uh, at protections for our residents, whether that's strengthening rent control, uh, advocating for just cause, um, expanding uh, uh, rent protections uh, for residents in a variety of different uh, units, and making sure we have something called a tenant preference ordinance so that we prioritize existing residents in areas that are vulnerable to uh, displacement uh, for new affordable housing that is being developed here in the city. Thank you, Peter. Nora, you're up. You know what? Thank you. I think this is uh, one of the most important questions that we should be discussing. Um, we know that uh, as a society, we must protect residents from being unfairly displaced. Uh, the other thing that we know about Silicon Valley and San Jose, it's one of the most expensive places to live. And we see that we are starting to see gentrification in East San Jose. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it would happen and we're seeing it now. Um, one of the things that I wanna bring to the table and I'm hoping that uh, my colleagues when I get there will see the value of us readdressing the in lieu fee for affordable housing and maybe using that money in a different way. And I wanna be able to work with people that wanna invest in building extremely low income housing in this community, low income housing, so that we could actually build those on transit corridors. Because our community that is just trying to make ends meet need to have a community that they can live, work and play in. 
um, they shouldn't be driving in from other you know, cities that are further than an hour away to come and uh, provide for their family. They should be able to live here. So those are some of the things that I will do. And I'll use some of the, my policies that I used when I was on the city council. I built several uh, affordable housing projects and one of them we were able to subsidize so that people could own their own home or their own town home. And I think that's important. I'm about making sure that people, whether they wanna rent or own their own home, have the opportunity. And I'm willing to put a, a team together that will think outside of the box on how we make that dream happen for people that wanna live in San Jose and in East San Jose. Thank you for that question. No, you're welcome. Thank you both for ambitious answers. Uh, let's look at displacement at a little different angle. New development, even when it's affordable housing, uh, with ground floor commercial space, usually still displaces small businesses because the rent in the new projects is too high or the space is more than many kind of mini businesses on the east side need. What can be done to relocate or otherwise assist these small businesses that might be displaced? Nora? I think one of the things that we need to do to make sure that our small businesses continue to thrive in East San Jose is that we look at the economic development department and figure out how we create resources that would be available for our community. But I first, the most important thing that I think we need to do is each of the business districts, whether it's Alum Rock or Story Road, that our economic development uh, department has a staff person that is designated with them to help them maneuver the, the system, whether it's at the state, whether it's at the city, and, and, and give them the opportunity to see all the grants that are available for them. But I think that the, we're gonna have to think outside of the box and make sure that uh, uh, our small businesses are able to thrive here because in East San Jose, they are the backbone of our economic engine here. And I'm willing to look at that. We may want to look at what some of the practices that have happened in other districts within the city of San Jose. But I also uh, look forward to the opportunity of, uh, of hearing their input and what their concerns are above of what I've already heard from them. Um, thank you. Peter, what can be done about uh, displaced small businesses? How can they be helped? Uh, I, I really uh, appreciate this question, Terry. You know, the number one threat to our small businesses during the pandemic, unfortunately, was displacement. Um, that threat is still eminent as many small businesses have not recovered um, due to uh, not being unable to pay off loans or the impact of the pandemic that required them to go into debt. Um, in my opinion, you know, unfortunately, the city did not do enough uh, in this space. Um, there was, uh, you know, a, 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 an eviction moratorium, uh, but unfortunately, many of our businesses on the east side still were being displaced, uh, were still being evicted, and many of them um, still experienced rent increases, even though there was an eviction moratorium because many of our uh, uh, small business owners, um, they don't have access to city hall support. There's, there wasn't really uh, legal professionals to help assist them with navigating those processes. I advocated for the East San Jose Rescue Plan, which would have allocated millions of dollars uh, to East San Jose, well, really, San Jose businesses in general for grant direct grant reliefs to address this, uh, as well as a business manager to support small businesses as they navigate state uh, and, and federal uh, grant processes. The grants did not go through, but the business manager did. And now we do have a resource in East San Jose in the Alum Rock District supporting these businesses as they navigate these processes and to help prevent them from being, being uh, displaced. When I'm elected, I will advocate for Two, two areas to prevent displacement. One is a debt relief program to support those businesses who incre uh, experienced an increase in debt to help pay off that debt so that they stay afloat. And the second would be a storefront registry program to act as an incentive for property owners to maintain their storefronts filled with local sp uh, small business owners instead of uh, uh, displacing them uh, from the community, which invites blight and other crime into the area. Okay, now it's time for our lightning round. So try to restrict your answers to one word if you can. Two words may be permitted. Peter, we'll start with you. What's your favorite bakery in District 5? 
I mean, it, it's got to be Peter's Bake. Oh, Peter's Bakery. <laughs> You're not the owner, though. Yeah. No, no, no. And Nora, your favorite bakery? Mexico Bakery. Nora, do you support the Community Opportunity to Purchase Act or COPA? You know, um, I know it's supposed to be one. Um, I'd like to understand it better. Okay, Peter? Yes. Peter, do you support Mayor Licardo's proposal to require liability insurance for gun owners? Yes. Nora? No. Nora, do you support a vacant home tax? A what tax? Vacant home tax. Um, you can pass on these if you're not sure. Yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. Peter, how about you? Yes. And Peter, do you support closing Reed Hillview Airport? Yes. Nora? Yes, yes. Nora, this is a hard one. Earthquakes, sharks, or San Jose Giants? Oh my God. <laughs> that is a hard one. All the above. <laughs> Peter? I got to say San Jose Giants. And Peter, what's your favorite park in District 5? Uh, Cimarron, Cimarron Park. Nora? I think mine would be uh, Labu. I have too many, but I'll talk about Labu. Labu. Okay, okay. And Nora, Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune? A Jeopardy. <laughs> Peter? I like Wheel of Fortune. Okay, you both did pretty well, though there were a few more than one word answers there. Anyway, now here's a question from Jewel Buchanan. Jewel is active with the Allen Rock Urban Village Advocates. Uh, here's Jewel. The Allen Rock Urban Village Association, ARUVA, is a collective group of homeowners and organizations that live along the Allen Rock Corridor. Our question is, how can you assist Aruba to codify the architectural design guidelines that ensure developers coming into the corridor will honor the community and the goal of a cohesive cultural arts center destination. And if you could please respectively answer in the present tense. And we'll start with Nora on this one. Well, thank you for the question, Jewel. Um, I think one of the things that I would make sure that we do is to do a, an overlay to make sure that anyone that wants to build there and that it gets adopted by the council so there's no room for them to try to put anything they want, but it's what the community wants there. Peter? Hello, Jewel, I really appreciate <laughs> this question. Um, Aruba is an excellent organization that does amazing advocacy on behalf of uh, the Alam Rock uh, uh, community. Um, I've already, you know, Jewel knows I've already been involved in the conversations around Aruba and working in partnership with developers to make sure that they hear the voices of the community. Uh, one thing is for sure, as development occurs in East San Jose, we need to make sure that the community has a stronger presence in those discussions. Um, uh, one thing about the uh, quote unquote urban village in Alam Rock, it, it, it was never 100% codified. Uh, so I'm more than happy to champion uh, making sure that the language uh, of the format within uh, Aruba's bylaws and, and uh, accountability measures they want to hold developers to um, is codified. And I'd be happy to introduce that as a council member, because I know it's extremely important to make sure that um, uh, as development and growth occurs in District 5, that it does so in a way that complements existing structures, uh, does not cause harm to surrounding communities, um, and uh, is a positive uh, um, it has a positive impact to our environment. Thank you. You're both well connected to the Latino community in the district, but the district population is one third Asian, mostly Vietnamese. What will you do to ensure that you also represent the district's large Vietnamese population? Peter, start with you. One thing um, that's extremely important to me is to make sure that we have uh, strong uh, representation of the Vietnamese community on staff. Um, those who have relationships uh, uh, in District 5, um, those who are fluent uh, in Vietnamese, uh, and make sure that we uh, include the Vietnamese uh, population in the decision making uh, and outreach uh, done by the office. Um, I will be an advocate to make sure that as uh, we fill our boards and commissions, uh, that we do so in a way that uh, empowers the Vietnamese uh, uh, American community. 
um, as well as uh, the open positions for elected office. I wanna make sure that the Vietnamese community has a voice in how schools are run, how parks are being maintained, how public safety uh, is managed in our district. And, and the way I wanna do that is by partnering with the Vietnamese community at large. Nora? No, thank you for this question. And, and yes, I have a, a strong uh, relationship with the Latino community, but as well as with the Vietnamese community. I've been working with them for more than 20 years. And some of the things that I worked with them on the local level is that when they wanted their Vietnamese heritage garden, I was one of the first council members that said, I will commit $100,000 so that gets done. And we're still waiting. So this council has not uh, made it a priority. So I'm going to make that a priority when I get there. The other thing that I worked with them on is making sure that we recognize at the state level, Little Saigon Shopping Center, because that was important for them. It was important for them to be recognized. And we worked together to get signage on 280 to make sure that people from all over, because it's not just a jewel here in San Jose, but it is recognized uh, all over. And so that was important for them. So I'll continue to do that. I'll continue to make sure that the person that works in my office that is fluent in Vietnamese has a strong relationship with them. And as the Vietnamese community knows, I'm accessible and I've always had an open door policy and I'm gonna make sure that we work together to continue to make sure that their needs continue to be addressed here in East San Jose. Thank you both. Uh, shockingly, we're almost out of time. We have a couple minutes left though. I wanna give you each a minute or so less, a little bit less maybe to wrap up. So let's begin with you, Nora, and then Peter. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be able to share some of my thoughts. And this was a, a really fun uh, interview to be a part of. And I hope that as people view this, that they take uh, into consideration that I have experience. Uh, I wanna create a city as well as a district where you can walk out your front door, as I shared with you, and that you can visit your neighboring parks. I wanna bring leadership that will make sure that we build on what we started many years ago because it seems like we haven't been able to build on uh, past experience and past leadership. And I'm gonna work with every neighborhood association. That will be one of the things that I'll do for sure. And that's to make sure that we bring back 23 neighborhood associations here in East San Jose. Thank you, Peter, wrap it up. Thank you. You know, uh, I wanna appreciate this opportunity to engage with your viewers, Harry. Um, the residents of, of District 5 deserve a leader who has been consistent with their advocacy. Our residents deserve someone who will fight on their behalf and has the right experience prioritizing residents' needs over personal self-interest. Someone who cares about this city and has a track record of advocating for its most vulnerable populations. I want to be clear. I'm not running for city council because I want to be a career politician or to elevate my profile. I'm running because I'm a neighborhood leader who wants to make a difference in our, our community. You have my word that I will be accessible and will make all of my decisions in partnership with the leaders of my district. Nora Campos and Peter Ortiz, thank you for being with us today. Good luck with your campaigns and thanks for running. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back next month to continue our series of conversations with runoff candidates in local elections. Meanwhile, you can follow us on Facebook, and you can catch up on all our previous shows on our website at createvsj.org or on YouTube by searching for Create TV San Jose. And now, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching.